everybody, Carl Schuf from Snorkel.tv. Welcome aboard. Uh, today we're going to start exploring our first way of handling bulletproof page transitions with Timeline Max. Uh, hopefully you saw my teaser video which gave you an overview of all three different approaches we're going to take. If not, I will link that up in this blog post so you can get a little bit of an overview. Uh, but today we're going to be focusing on the first method which is the jump to section. So if I have a Swift here that has my timeline built, um, I want to show you that I can jump back and forth to different sections. Now this is really the uh, quick, lean, and mean way to do it. So regardless of whether or not a section is tweening in or not, whenever I request a new section, we automatically jump to the intro animation of that section. Um, our other methods are going to allow us to rewind out the animation that just came in and then jump to a next section. And also we're going to show you that we can play forward and do a custom tween out for each section. Uh, but we want to go step by step. So we're going to just start with uh, the easy way of doing this and then we'll add on features as we go. So what I want to do here is just start out with just a minute or two of basic file setup that we're going to be using for all the different bulletproof methods moving forward. Okay, so I just want to show you that my timeline is really clean here. Um, on my stage I have something here that's called Home MC. All right, and I have each one of my section movie clips in its own layer. So here we have the blog movie clip. So it's one container for all those assets that are being tweened. If I double click on that symbol, you'll see that we have a recent posts MC, blog one MC, and blog two MC. So we're gonna use a timeline to control each one of these elements inside of this movie clip to tween in. All right, and the same thing goes for all the different sections. So we have a really neat IDE timeline here. And for each section, we have a container clip, which allows us just to focus on the elements in that section. All right, and we're gonna be using that moving forward. Now, the way our timeline is built in Timeline Max is like this. Let me just go to my start file here. And you'll notice that we have our timeline built right here. And the main thing that's going to make all this work are the labels that we have. You'll see here I have home in, and then I'm appending some tweens that tell the home movie clip to uh, start from an alpha of zero, and then for various clips inside of there, I'm doing an all from tween where we're doing some scaling and an alpha tween. And then we're uh, making the make awesome clip slide across to the right. Don't worry about trying to uh, dissect all the different tweens here. It's all fairly basic, but I know it can look cryptic at first glance. The important thing is all of these tweens here make up the build of the home section. And when that build is over, I have a home complete label, which is very important. After the home complete, there's a little bit of a tween here that fades out the home clip. The next section for blog starts off with a blog in label. And then we have a number of tweens that introduce all those blog elements. And when it's over, we have blog complete. And then there's a little bit of a tween here to fade out. Same thing goes for portfolio in, portfolio complete. And by using this standardized label structure, we're going to have great little hooks to navigate back and forth to different sections. Now I want to show you that if I play this file right out of the box, you'll see that I just have a timeline that's playing all the way through. So now you see all the builds come in, then you have everything fade out, and the next section comes in. So that's where we're starting with the timeline that works like this. Now to really drive home the concept of those labels, I want to show you this example timeline file that I have set up, okay? And here we have a very basic timeline, home, comes in, blog, then portfolio, then about, and it just plays all the way through. Now you'll notice that the labels that I have here are very important. Home in is where the home starts, and then I have a label for home complete. And literally, if I want to jump to the portfolio section, I'm going to tell Timeline Max, hey, you know what? Jump to portfolio in and tween to portfolio complete, and then it will stop. So in this jump to section, that's really all we're doing. If I press the about button at any time, let's say I'm halfway into blog in, I'm going to say, all right, I've requested the about section. We're going to jump to about in 
and tween to about complete. So that's how things are going to work with our timeline max. Now I'm using the word timeline max all the time. For the most part, we could be using timeline light. All right. So uh, I'm using the two interchangeably. So let's go to my start file here and you'll see that my animation plays all the way through. Now, if this were a real website with multiple sections, um, chances are you don't want to play through the whole animation. Maybe you just want home to show up. So what I'm going to do, let's go to my actions for my start file, where I have my entire timeline built here with the various labels. And down at the bottom here, I have a comment, play through to home one complete on first run. So what I'm going to do is tell my timeline called TL to tween to, and I'm just going to put in the name of the uh, label. So it's going to be home underscore complete. All right. And I don't want, oh, that's tweedoo. Not so good. Let's do tween to. And now when I test my Swift out, you'll see that it stops on home complete. Literally, all I did was this. In my example timeline, I said tween to home complete and then it stops right where the home build has finished. Pretty easy stuff. Now, in order for any of this to work, each one of my buttons here needs to know which section it's going to be controlling. So in my actions, I want to have you see that I already have set up um, some event listeners for the entire nav. And this is a trick I use all the time where I put my event listeners on a container clip and then we use the target property to figure out which button has been pressed. So for nav home MC, I'm assigning an ID property of home, and then blog MC has blog, portfolio, and about. So right now, if I interact with any of these buttons here, I have some rollovers in place, but nothing happens when I click. Let me just uh, get my output panel ready to go. Excuse me. And the first thing I'm going to do is this, is on my click event, you'll see there's nothing here. I'm just going to do um, trace e dot target dot id, okay? And by doing that, you'll see now if I click on home, it says home. Click on portfolio, about, about, blog. So now I have a way to track which button has been pressed, and I'm going to use that ID to figure out what frame to start tweening to and from. Now also to make this work, I want to be keeping track of a um, the target section, meaning I want to know what section people want to have requested. Where do they want to go to? So at the top of my file here, I already have set up a variable called target section. Inside of my click handler here, I'm going to say that target section equals e.target.id. All right, so we know what that is. Once I know where people want to go, I'm going to just say, hey, TL, I want you to tween to, and what do I want to do? Let's say somebody clicked on blog, right? Well, I want to start at blog in. So I'm going to say tween to target section plus, and then we append this string to it, underscore in. And I actually don't want to tween to there. I'm going to do a from to. I'm sorry. So I'm going to start at the in, and then I'm going to go to the complete. So we have two parameters here. Target section plus underscore complete. All right. So here, check it out didn't have to do a lot. Let's click on portfolio. So it goes to portfolio in and then tweens to portfolio complete. About in to about complete. Home and then blog. So it doesn't matter where I'm clicking or how fast. I can go like crazy through all these things. Click on blog. It's always going to end up on blog because the instant I click, we're jumping to the in frame of the target section and we're tweening to the complete frame of the target section. All right, pretty slick. Now the only problem that we have here, and this comes up almost every time you do any sort of flash-based navigation, is that once the home section builds, if I click on home, it replays. If I'm in portfolio and click again, it rebuilds. Now, hey, maybe you want that to happen. 
more times you probably don't want to reload or redisplay the current section that you're in. So in order to prevent that, in every one of the examples moving forward, we're going to check to see whether the target section is the same as the current section. So in order to do that, I'm going to add one more variable. I'm going to say var current section is going to be a string. And actually, we know that the first section we go to is going to be home. All right, We know that off the box because we're going to play the home section first. And then now, whenever I tween to a section, I'm going to ask the question. I'm going to say, if target section, based on the button we just pressed, is not equal to current section, so if they are not the same, then it's OK to do this tween here. All right, let me just do a little quick format job here. And you'll see, if target section isn't equal to current section, then we will do the tween. And I could put an else statement in here just for the heck of it and say, trace, you are all ready at, and then plus current section. All right, that's a little bit more than I really need to do, but we'll give it a shot. So now, check it out. If I'm at home, home is current section, and I click this button here, it says you are already home. So it's not going to replay the animation. The problem I will have, though, is if I go to portfolio and then click portfolio again, it still plays. Well, the problem here is that I did not update the current section variable when I went to portfolio. If I go to home, it's saying, hey, you are already at home. It doesn't know that I went to portfolio. So what I'm going to do is this. Whenever I figure out, hey, you know what? Um, it's OK to uh, click a new button and do a new tween. I'm then also going to say current section equals target section. All right, so then I always know where I am. So here, again, if I go to blog, you are already at home. If I go to portfolio, it plays fine. If I click portfolio again, you are already at portfolio, and it won't let me in. I can go to about, but I can't choose about again. All right, so there we have our bulletproof jump to section. It always immediately jumps to the new section and plays, and it runs like butter. So there you go, guys. There's our, our file setup that we're going to be using moving forward and a very simple way of jumping to various sections of our timeline. Um, coming up soon, we're going to be talking about doing a reverse um, animation out. And let me just uh, open up that file real quick for you. Let's do in, out, reverse out. And you'll see here that instead of jumping directly to a section, if I go to portfolio, it rewinds uh, the previous animation. If I go to about, it plays in reverse. So regardless of when I click, if portfolio is building and I say, nope, blog, it goes out and then the next one comes in. So that's where we're going next. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll catch you in the next video.